Mizu's fights were fucking awesome. Like, and they did they did a great job with the choreography too. Like when she's fighting the assassins in I think it's episode three, two or three, she's on a cliff, like the a cliff face, and like standing on these little. She's they're basically like fighting like goats. <laughs> Welcome to the Anime Summit Podcast. My name is Nick, and I'm here with Danny. Why do you sound like one of those <laughs> cheesy, like... Uh, I'm a shock Howard, jock. Howard Stern fucking... Yeah, I'm a like, shock jock radio host, oh Danny. God, Come on. No, no. You're on the air, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and next we have Sam. Sam has a bit of a, a mouth problem right now. A I got throat a, problem. I got a mouth. I got a throat problem. I was throating. It's okay. Sam is not upset. She's not crying about. Some uh, yeah, cheese. it sounds like I'm crying. I'm really not. It's in my voice. It went last wow, weekend. Wow, dude, we need a we need a soundboard so I can make like goofy sound like dolphin noises and shit. Instead, yeah, in place, yeah. I'm going to talk very minimal, which is fine because I talk too much anyway. But yeah, Nick made us watch this bum ass show. Why don't you tell him about it? Yeah, Blue Eye Samurai. Okay, so this show. Today we're talking about Blue Eyes Samurai. I know we're a little late. This show came out at the end of last year in November, so it's cool. Better late than never, right? Uh, yeah, but before we get to that, we're going to talk about some uh, links.animesummit.net. Uh, don't forget the ad pause and Shopify. <laughs> I'm reading directly off the sheet. <sighs> You right. would be that person that that says like the thing <laughs> that you know you should just say to yourself and not actually say it out loud. Go oh, fuck yourself, San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> you know he reads everything on the teleprompter. <laughs> All right. <sighs> There's a really funny YouTube clip of David Spade giving a speech about Adam Sandler, and he's like, "You know what? Put the teleprompter down. I'm going to speak from the heart." Okay, put it back up again. <laughs> you couldn't think of anything. That's funny, dude. Yeah, Dave, but it was David Spade's David voice, Spade's so he did, it, he did it better. He's funny, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, links.animesummit.net. Join our Discord. Join uh, everything we got. We got Patreon. We got all this. We got all this stuff. Sam so will tell you next week and the week before. So, you know, just, I'm I'm just a fill. I'm just a fill in, okay? So, new shirt dropping question of the week. soon. New shirt dropping soon. Oh, yeah, okay. We got new shirts dropping soon. I still got to get mine, by the way. We got. Oh, sorry. Out. I forgot to order them again. All right. <laughs> yeah, you sound real sad about it, Sam, huh? All right. Question of the week. Nick, will you please say the question of the week? Well, yes, I will. Thank you, Nick. All right. The question is from Snowman, and, and they ask, uh, what is your favorite piece of anime merch, not counting Anime Summit merch, obviously, that you own? Also, King says that Snowman is the best. That's oh, hilarious. Right. Oh, man. Um, do figures count or right? Figures count, right? That's merch. merch. That's merch. Yeah, 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 merch. Okay, for some reason I just thought of like clothes or something. I don't know why. Um, God. merchandising. Yeah, anything, right? Okay, merchandising. Yeah. Merchandising. Let me think about that one because I've been kind of going through my stuff lately. Let me think about that for a second. I don't know. When I buy something, that's my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, that's whatever what the I mean, newest right? like, thing <laughs> is for Danny. <laughs> You um, got your I, you got your booby sticker for, that you put on your glass or your mug or something, right? My booby sticker. I don't oh. know. You guys all have like booby waifu stickers or oh, something. Oh, oh, the the gamer sup stickers. Yeah, I mean, I did put one on my my computer. Um. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, I know which one is my favorite. My favorite is the um, the 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 Howl sticker that Sen and I got at Otakon and it's just uh, Howl uh, completely naked and he has an apron on and like it, you can see his like butt cheeks like your his butt cheeks are facing you and like oh, he's like cooking the, that breakfast. one guy from school days who, who or not school days uh, Food Wars there's uh, a character in Food Wars who does yeah, that yeah kind of similar to that yeah so I still don't know where I'm gonna put him on like so I can look at him all the time put him on the bathroom door so every time you close you can just stare at it no <laughs> then like what happens if we move then I can't bring him with me what are you you're gonna like nail it in there or something no like, it's a sticker like 
I won't oh, be able well, to reuse it. Just take the door. Take the door. I'm not taking the door. What do you got, Sam? What about you? Um, keep it quick. Yeah, no, I, it's probably my you favorite. Protect your voice. It's probably my favorite thing right now, just because I it's I I recently built it. It's um a model kit of the Big O, which is one of my favorite robots ever. Oh shit, that was cool. Yeah, I saw that in the Discord. And so I finally Keiichi Sato's a really good mecha designer. I, I've I've loved, I've loved his work for a long time, and um, it comes with LEDs to put in the eyes, which is super cool, and um. The hydraulic arm pump things function. The skirt chain things function. It's super dope. So, yeah, I love it. One of my favorite robots ever. Everybody take a shot. Sam mentioned the big O again. This yeah, is like three weeks in a row, I think. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, it's either that or... That's your favorite show now, Sam. It is. God damn it, dude. Yeah, fuck. Even Gelly and Step Aside. <laughs> Step Aside. Yeah, it's all about Robert, all right. Roger Smith. Yeah. Uh, my favorite piece of merch... I found a little teeny teeny weeny chainsaw man. Uh, I just found it on, at work. <laughs> it was free, so. Oh yeah, that's right. That's so um, funny. Yeah, I also have a T-shirt that I that's like inappropriate that I like to wear, but it uh, probably shouldn't wear it to certain places. It's just like it's like a Master Roshi nosebleed glasses reflection thing. It's not that bad. It's just a girl in a bathing suit, but. I get out would be a little bit over a little bit over the line, maybe. That's kind of that's it. That's about it. Um, all right. I gotta go buy some Nendos on uh Tom because I I keep forgetting to unsubscribe from that. <laughs> yeah, either that or actually I'm thinking about it now just because I'm moving my manga stuff around. Um I have a copy of Shonen Champion from like the eighties because the featured manga on the front is Crows. So I have a couple of random manga nice, magazines nice. just for the covers and the chapters and the series in them. So I just collect them random random ones that I like. But yeah, I'm into that shit too. Like there's some weird shit. But yeah, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna go lay down. You guys uh <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sam. We'll get your score Sam's at the, the end. <laughs> Sam's the 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 gif of the of the little kid crying and hyperventilating in the beach and say, "I'm gonna go take a nap now." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that's, yeah. I'm gonna lie down right here. Oh, yeah. All right, Danny Waifu and Husbando. Waifu is Akemi, and Husbando is Mizu. Because honestly. Those two are the best characters in the whole show. Mizu's a chick, though, in right? My, in my opinion, yes. In your opinion? In my opinion, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, she. Well, she like, she just like poses as a man to uh, keep attention off of her. But yeah, I yeah. agree with that. Yes. Yes. All right, so this is Blue Eye Samurai, and we are talking about the Netflix show. I said that in a weird order. This was from 2023, came out in November, November 3rd. I think it came out all at once, did it? I or believe it, it, it could have been it came in out like at chunks. once. But either way, it's eight episodes, about 45 minutes to an hour per episode. This was, uh, Let's see. It, uh, production company was Blue Spirit, Netflix Animation, J.A. Green Construction Corp., and Three Arts Entertainment. I'm just reading off the wiki here. Mainly. <laughs> Directed by Jane Wu and created by Amber Noizumi and Michael Green. Yeah, Michael so Green and is... Amber Noizumi, are, they're like a husband and wife team, I guess. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Different last names. Cool. All right. So then, uh, the, the so this is a, this is a samurai... Uh, semi-fictional period piece kind of like uh it's almost like mulan a little bit in the sense that it's very american it's like an americanized version of like what would happen in japan <laughs> kind of um just with the way certain things happen but yeah so basically it's kind of kill bill again right but it, it's cool so th the main character mizu is she's a mixed race blue-eyed bushy and she she faces discrimination her whole life because uh there's there's no non-japanese people on the island at, at that point at that point in the 
this is like the late 1800s is that right or the edo it's the edo period it's the right 17th century of the edo period oh 17th wait 1600s whoa wait no eight, no it says the 17th century on the premise. so 1700s okay that doesn't sound right. Oh, no, the guns they this, had were it made was after. The six, it, it was the year was like, I believe, 1663 or something. Did they like have that. guns like that back then? Yeah. They did have to reload the one bullet at a time. So I'm musket, thinking, musket style rifle. It's yeah. It's a musket style. So you pour the gunpowder in the barrel that and stuff didn't really down. exist till the 1700s. But okay. Anyway. Yeah. So this is a Edo period, right? There's Meiji, Edo, a bunch of other ones. I should really learn my history better. Yeah, I'm bad at history. Kai is just like punching the air right now. He's he's like, Nick, you gotta it's, know it's, this. It's right. It's right when the Tokugawa shogun had closed the borders to everyone. They yeah, were like, yeah. no, no foreigners. So like, they see Mizu as like a you know, and that's oh, kind of that's Dutch. kind of the crux of like why this is happening. She's the so white like the Danny. You know? She's the white devil. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So that there's like there are apparent in the, in the show there were four white men who made it into Japan, who traded with them. Um, and uh, Abijah Fowler is, is the main bad guy in this arc of the show. And he's, he's like this Irish smuggler and he's allied with the Shogun and he's trying to, he's trying to take down the current Shogun and that's, that's his plot. And uh, Mizu is trying to kill pretty much any white person that she sees, which that's the only one she's going to see. Uh, be, to get vengeance for her life of discrimination. So that's basically the the gist of the main plot. There's a whole lot uh, of side characters uh, that, that she runs into, and there's a lot of cool fights and action scenes, and it's cool. So that's that's kind of like the super basic rundown of it. What did you guys think? What did you th- what did you think going in? Um, Danny, you go first. Me. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. It was like. I I I knew about it because um, me and a client of mine were talking about it and stuff, and she was telling me that her son started watching it, um, and then like she was saying that she started watching it, cut, but then she didn't finish it because the episodes were really long. So that kind of like, I was just like, ah, oh, I don't want to watch this because like it was around the time when. I just finished watching Pluto and like Pluto, the Pluto episodes were like super long. So I was like jaded from that. Um, but it's, it's very interesting at least. Like I didn't expect to kind of enjoy it. And I did get like that Kill Bill kind of nostalgia from it and stuff, especially from the music. So yeah, they played one of the songs at one yeah. point. Um, but I, I mean, I, there were certain, th- th- I mean, we can get into this later. Um, but I mean, it, it gave me information about the Edo period that I never really thought about. So now I'm kind of interested in reading more about it or you know in a way also excited on like another season to come for this so um because i think like the material and and the creativity for this story was very interesting and especially coming from a french studio um well this is a french studio yeah, it says it says it right here. Yeah, um, Blue Spirit is French, a is Blue a, Spirit is a French studio. They're a French yeah. studio. Oh, okay. and, and well, it just, looks like there's multiple companies. Yeah, no, there's multiple companies, but Blue Spirit stood on business. You know what I mean? So like, Blue Spirit were like the main. They out and Netflix Animation is more like the producing side. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. then they outsource Three Arts, um, uh, which they do a lot of stuff for like live action shows, like effects yeah. and, and front things. So Blue Spirit is is kind of a newer French studio. Um, and for those of you who don't know much about French animation, I highly recommend diving into it because it's wonderful. Um, oh, check out Arcane. Yeah, Arcane. <laughs> Arcane was one me and Nick talked about it. And um, Goblins is another one. Um, but Blue Spirit, they've been doing stuff for kids for a long time. 
um, and they, they've been getting recognized recently because um, Marvel Studios has been outsourcing to them for the What If stories. And uh, oh, I don't know if yeah. you guys watch What If. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there's a there's also a thing on HBO Max with um, Gizmo from Gremlins, and they did that, The Secrets oh, of the nice. Mogwai, yeah, which I've been wanting to watch for a while so I could make fun of Gizmo from Plumber. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, the French animation is is pretty solid. This is not one of my favorite styles of like art, like the art direction of Blue. Samurai. Yeah, the art style was weird, and, and yeah, there were, a, I mean, well, it was like this. It was like a CG uh, characters, right? It wasn't well, yeah. which most stuff is, but it it felt it was it was it was better than like the shitty Berserk CG, but. It it didn't look as good as Arcane, I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And the I mean the animation style, some of it was cool, but some of it was inconsistent. And then the, just the art style of the characters for me were not. I think they tried to make it look like realistic because you can tell too, like a lot of the storyboarding and and cinematography that they tried to make it look like it was like you know the, the, it was actually being like a live action movie being filmed. Which right, I think a lot yeah. of anime tries, to, a lot of animation tries to do lately. We're in this new era of, and this is, I'm going to say this one thing and and pause for a, a while again, but we're in this era of animation now, where you can see it in the last five years or so. And me and Danny talked about it when we talked about Red. Um, there's this even because even Pixar starting to move to like these different things. Mm-hmm, where mm-hmm. we don't need to see a 3D animated thing that needs to look super realistic. It just needs to look good. And so people are trying these new styles, right, of 3D animation. New things you can do with Blender and things like that. And one of the biggest ones we saw that tried something really fucking awesome and it worked out was um, Into the Spider-Verse. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. Now, and now a lot of different uh, and now across, going on. Yeah, and now across the Spider-Verse. And we're seeing animators in Japan and France take these techniques and use them in their own way to make better CG. And just, you know, now now we're seeing CG anime that looks better. In the case of Blue Eye Samurai, you can tell they tried to do that. They tried to make this different kind of look, kind of make it look a little more like a like a live action film. And I'm not saying it didn't work. I'm just saying. I wasn't super into it, but I mean, it's still, there were some parts that looked really fucking cool, but um, one scene in particular, this is not a spoiler, but like, it was like a, it looked like the camera was stuck in the ceiling and it was like a hallway and it was only for like five seconds, but it was like four against four or five soldiers against Mizu and she slaughters them. And it's like a top down shot of a hallway just going across the screen. And it was super dope. But like, yeah, I, I, this yeah, new like old era. boy style hallway. For, yeah, yeah, exactly. For like a oh couple of seconds, exactly like that. Yeah, fucking old. It wasn't scene. quite like that. It was like a. It was like a above, not. But on it was the side. from above and not from the side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking old I or whatever. Um. Uh, but either way, we're in this kind of new era of three D animation that many different studios from all over the world are trying, and I think everyone's kind of trying new things, and I like I I like to see that so which is what blue samurai tried to do. And I think it's cool. So, but yeah, anyways, yeah, go yeah, ahead. I, I, I found it interesting that the main character, well, I would say none of the characters were actually, they, they kind of did the Satoshi Kon, Kon thing where it's like, nobody's actually like attractive, like waifu bait. <laughs> I, I think like they all look very human. They look flawed. You know what I mean? Like their faces and their features it's not like seasonal anime where it's like, well, look at my bazongas. You know, it's not, there's nothing like that. Right. And the main character, uh, Mizu was, was, uh, was, she had like a very unique looking face. She, and she almost could pull off being a man in a way. Cause like, just cause the way her face was shaped. But then, you know, when, when she's like cleaning her wounds in the, in the waterfall, like she's a woman. But yeah, the well, she I just taught, I just found well, that she, design she, interesting. She was raised to be a man, like her her mother or whoever that person was that took care of her briefly. You know, told her 
you you need to act like a boy you you need to do this you need to do that and so you know she honestly she didn't really have a choice and now but now she feels comfortable in this in in her identity and stuff and she has you know and she's very focused on what she wants to do and and like her quote unquote mission is she needs to find the four white men um yeah that brought her into this life and kill them. It's like the opposite of Mamma Mia. Have you guys ever seen that? <laughs> no. Yeah, With uh, Pierce Brosnan and yeah, Meryl Streep. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm going to invite my dads to a wedding. <laughs> Here we go. And he's just again. like, I'm going to fucking kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And, and okay. I, I missed something. Cause like when she was a kid, she trained under the famous swordsmith, uh, Master Ag, right? And then when she was an adult, she was trying to, she was getting wed to a guy. And I don't know uh, what, what happened so, in between that. Okay, so that- and this is episode five where they showed that. That, but. I believe, did not actually happen. I believe that was more of a fever dream and kind of like a what if situation that she was- Really? Thinking of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude, because um, she was fighting- with the so guy. It looked like a it, flashback. And there, literally, so there's like an allegorical where, tale. Where the so Nick, if you even if you go to the wiki and you go to the characters list and you go to um uh Miko, who is the quote unquote husband of Mizu, it says a disgraced samurai in Mizu's fever dream. So like where the hell? Okay. It's uh, it's under like where the characters are. Oh, okay, I got you. Recurring, and then uh, Miko Miko. Well, can a fever dream also be based in reality though? Well, I think that I think it was also meant to make you confused. Confused, confused. yeah, because yeah, because like, yeah, that's what I thought in narrator. the beginning. I was all yeah. like, oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it actually so. happened. <clears throat> um, but but then my my question is like, okay, so she trained as a kid under the swordsmith, and then. How did she get from there to being with her mother or who she thought it was her mother? That's the thing that, that I feel like that they don't really tell you. Okay. So, but like I said, to me, how how I interpret maybe she watched her, the play and then is her daydream it. and stuff is that like that that is like kind of a what if situation because with Miko. She was bonding with him and like um because like he accepted her for who she who she is, you know, like she she felt the connection towards him because like he's a samurai and she is also a samurai. So like she was able to bond with him a lot more because they have this sort of connection. And that's where I think, you know. Uh, Tygen is also a good match with Mizu because they are both warriors. They can relate. Oh yeah, well that's the OTP with that for and sure. Everything. So, um, yeah. So I think in a way, Miko and that fever dream is like something that that Mizu is yearning for. Like she wants somebody to just accept her for who she is. And you know, just okay. Relate I'm, to I'm, her. I'm getting an alternative take on Reddit. They said that it did happen, but it was like okay. So, the, so the the woman who who what was her mother or said she was her mother? She was an opium addict, and she saw Mizu as an opportunity to make money. So she tried to marry her off to a rich old samurai, and she could smoke and and do her thing. And so the maid that maid had abandoned her twice. Once when when Mizu was a child. And once as an adult. So that's apparently what happened. It wasn't super clear in the show that that's what happened, but I, that makes more sense. Because why would you dream about getting betrayed like that? I, mean, I guess, I guess it would be a nightmare, but like, you know, I think it did happen. Um, but it was just like the way that the story was told was, was a little bit uh, like the episode itself was great. Episode five was probably the best episode, but that, but like just anyway, I'm nitpicking it. I'm going to say it happened. Danny says it doesn't happen. Sam says it does and doesn't happen. Okay, we got all three takes here. I'm speaking for you now, Sam. <laughs> Thank um, you. 
Okay, so the start of the story is... Okay, first of all, this is a very uh, bloody show. It's not, like, super gory. There's a little bit of gore, but it's it's mostly just, like, very violent. Um, and And you get Mizu just... She's almost like a Baki character where she can take unreal amount of punishment and also her, she can just like literally slice people in half, but nobody has magic power. So she's like peak. She's like Captain America level of like strength, kind of not really, but almost, you know what I mean? Um, peak human levels. So and, you know, cinema level of violence. And so like she's fighting in the first episode. Uh, she well, she meets her her companion, right? She meets uh, what's his name? Ringo. And Ringo is peaches. this. Uh, sorry, I didn't hear that, Danny. What was that? Said peaches. Peaches, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so she meets Ringo, and Ring- Ringo has no hands, and he's like, he's he's feeling sorry for Mizu, which is really funny. He's like, oh, you're disabled, but you're still strong. <laughs> and he's like, he's got no hands, and he's feeling sorry for her, which is which is really funny. Um, and he has like these these wraps that are tied to his uh, wrists and he can like attach things to them, which but who ties the wraps? Actually, how does he could probably do it with his teeth or something? But also, how does he wipe? He probably doesn't wipe. He probably just he probably just washes in the river or something. But uh, yeah, anyway, he uses a bidet. It is Japan. That's true. Uh, so yeah, so Ringo is great. I love Ringo. He's he's a he was definitely like panda, the comedy guy. relief out of the entire show. Yeah, yeah, and and he his dream is to be is to be great at what he doesn't really know, <laughs> but like it, which is fine because no, almost nobody knows. But like he he wanted to be a great like noodle chef, and then he tasted some some really good well, noodles. Well, he thought he was great at making noodles, but then, yeah, he thought he was, and then he tasted then some actually he good tasted ones. Tasted some actual good ones, and he's and all he's like, like, oh nope, oh, I'm never not gonna get anymore. There. <laughs> not, no, I'm not. And then. uh and then he then he figures out that he can help somebody who's great, which is Mizu. And so he does that and he helps her along the journey. She she's kind of so Mizu is like this very uh st- like standoffish character. And this is the this is what I like about it, is like she she is a quote unquote strong female protagonist, but not the shitty Disney kind that has no personality, that's boring, that's that's like a nothing burger, you know. Like the, Mizu actually like she has real struggles. She's a real person. Uh she can feel things and she has flaws, you know. She's not she's not a perfect character. And this is anime's guilty of this too where they have like a you know, a harem any any harem, right? Like Kirito from Sorted Online. He's like a perfect character, right? <laughs> like Mizu is not perfect, but she's she's very like physically strong, but um yeah, so she she's like she's grumpy and Ringo is like He's he's like the the good cop to the her bad cop kind of, um. So yeah, they meet in the first episode. Uh, you also quickly meet up with uh, Tygen and uh, Akemi, and th- that's in the next episode. And and what they they are, Akemi is like this princess who is who is getting wed. She's basically being uh, like bartered for a better position for her father uh, in the Shogun, and uh, so and later on in the series, there's more to that as well, which we can we can spoil later but um so she wants to marry Tygen and she's trying to Akemi Akemi is a, is a great character too cuz she she exists in a world where women have essentially no power or no real power they have she figures out they have soft power they can they can uh they can kind of uh manipulate things subtly but not directly which you know, which is a big struggle uh, for for Akemi. And so she that's like her journey. She's trying to live her own life despite being rich. She's unhappy. So that's that's her. And then Taigen is like this, the samurai and he gets beaten by Mizu, Mizu early on. And he vows to to fight her to the death later on after they solve the situation. So that's kind of like the very basic plot. A, a little more a lot more happens after that. They fight assassins. They fight uh Eventually, they're they're fighting against Abijah Fowler and uh, the uh, who's the other guy? Um, the guy with Mizu cuts off this guy's hand. I love his voice too. He's a really oh, great character. Oh, what's his name? Do, do, do. I was looking at the characters list. It's hard to find like a character list. I'm, um, I'm looking for um, the pictures. Um, Heiji Heiji Shindo. Heiji Shindo. Yeah, he um, Fowler's. Uh, uh, he's like um, uh, his accomplice. Like he was the one who is in charge of like all the, 
the black market underground um, stuff. Oh, here we like, go. So. I'm on the I'm on the uh, Blue Eye Samurai fandom page. It's it's Heiji Shindo. Oh yeah, this guy was great. I love this guy. Nikki so he, Nikki Shindo. Yeah, Nikki Shindo. He's my boy. That's the real husbando. Sorry, Danny. Heiji Shindo <laughs> is voiced by Randall Park. Oh, by the way, the best voice, George Takei. <laughs> that dude is awesome. Oh my god. He did um he did Seki, he, which is Princess Akemi's male tutor. Yes. And he he he's one of the best characters in the show, too. Like he he tries to help her um achieve uh what do you call it? Autonomy, basically. And power. And but he but he says like she has to do it in the way that is effective, right? She can't just throw tantrums and she can't just bulldoze her way through things. Like she has to like wield herself carefully in order to to do this. Um but yeah, he he he's great. He's great. I don't know. What what do you guys think? I'm I'm kind of rambling on a little bit here. Um I think I mean, even though this story is about Mizu and and I I am interested in Mizu's story. Uh for me, I was more interested in in Akemi's story overall. I I liked I liked the stuff that involved her than the stuff that revolved around Mizu, quite frankly. Um <clears throat> Yeah, Akemi Akemi had an interesting I, arc. I just I just feel like I don't know. I mean I I don't have anything against Mizu. I think and and you are right right Nick like Mizu is flawed like she's stubborn um she's a loner she doesn't want to be around Ringo she's got no like, riz there, there <laughs> there's multiple times where she tries to get rid of Ringo like he she she, um, she sends him to a brothel oh man the yeah, brothel she sends babe. him to the brothel too. and you know ask ask the brothel like oh how much for one night oh and then they're all like how much for like how much for three and yeah that, she tries to was, slow him down yeah so try to slow him down but he didn't so you know um who's the brothel but, uh queen I, I don't know her name uh madam kaji that was when they went madam kaji uh, i forget where great. they went um but that whole thing like with with akemi and uh seki and stuff like that when akemi when akemi tried to persuade her father into instead of doing an arranged marriage you know let akemi marry who she wants to marry and she wants to marry Ty- tygen um you know and then when that happens and everything like that obviously like the the rumors or whatever you want to call it like you know tygen got humiliated by uh, Mizu and stuff. So. Yeah, she cut. She cut off his top knot. Yeah, so now the the marriage uh, is cut off and stuff, and so now uh, Akemi's father is still going to uh, give you know send her off to Edo and stuff. So the whole journey with Akemi was far to me was far more interesting than this whole story about Mizu and how she wants to kill the white man and everything. Um I don't know. I I I I just the way Akemi portrays herself because obviously she's a strong-willed woman and in the Edo period, you know, women had no rights. Like it's exactly what happened in that period, you know, daughters were sold off to marry to wealthy families and stuff. Or to be so a like, whatever courtesan. Yeah, or or to be, um, you know, a geisha and stuff like that. Like, yeah. they were sold they, they off a- by their own families to make money and stuff. Like, they, yeah, they literally probably, had no yeah. rights and stuff. So that, for me, I feel, as a feminist, like... I enjoyed Akemi's story way more than this entire show. Like, I just want, personally, I just want a whole story about Akemi. Like, I don't care about Mizu. Played no offense Brenda to Song, Mizu. By the way. Brenda Song is Yes, sick. Brenda Song voices Akemi, and, like, I love Brenda Song. Like, 
she's amazing. Um, and I'm so happy that she was a part of this project. So I just rewatched uh, Wendy did great. Wu, Homecoming Warrior. That show was so sick. Yeah, she she did amazing. Zong, like Homecoming Warrior. I I absolutely loved her performance. Brenda Song, if oh, you're listening right now, as us. Brenda Song, if you're listening right now, come on our podcast. Thank you. <laughs> Fellow you can, millennial, you can, you can invite your to husband unite. too if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> what what a great name, Song. I haven't heard that <laughs> as a name in a while. She's um. Chinese Mandarin, I think. Yeah, Chinese. But um, oh, yeah, also, the voice acting in the show was was yeah, very great. Was very good it. for the most part. And and like I did watch some of it, uh, Japanese. But actually, the original. I mean, it's said on Netflix that the the original uh, audio track was English. Yeah, which is yeah. kind of funny. Which is like it would be in Japanese, like right in real life. Like obviously they're not speaking English, but you know. But you also had Carrie here, Yuka Tagawa, which is sick. And then you had Harry Shum Jr. and Ming Na Wen, which is also sick. And Stephanie Sue. Um, she's in a a bunch of stuff, dude. She's in SpongeBob. They they got good yeah. actors. They, they, got, got they, good they actors. definitely like put the power team on the voice acting. Yeah. And yeah. I, like, I like how they didn't do like the uh, the Mario movie thing where they're like, we're gonna get Chris Pratt. <laughs> you know, no offense to Chris Pratt, but he's not a voice actor. So Chris Pratt as right. Chris Pratt. He is Chris Pratt. Yeah. No, they they could have used Jack Black. Okay, you know, actually that would have probably ruined it. But <laughs> Jack Black is Abijah Fowler. <laughs> well, he was Bowser. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It would have been funny if if they made Jack Black do the Eddie Murphy thing where he plays like five different characters. You know, <laughs> like oh yeah, 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 the clumps or whatever. Or like the Rick and Morty thing, or like two guys voice the whole thing. Or Seth MacFarlane yeah. does like Seth MacFarlane. He does like eight characters. Oh, that's on. even better. Yeah, Family Guy. I'm family yep. Guy. Yeah. Anyways, sorry, tangent. Simpsons has a bunch of that. Those two. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Kemi, I agree. Great story. And it's 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 an interesting uh, way to portray like uh, what do you call it? Like female issues in a in a different time period, but it also still kind of relates to now. Not directly, obviously, but. Just like the fact that she's taking control of her life yeah. and strategizing and maneuvering s- smartly. Well, sometimes stupidly, but sometimes smartly. Because like she does make mistakes. Akemi makes mistakes where she like sh- she she what is she signs up for the brothel, uh, Madam uh, what's her name? Oh my god, I can't remember. Her name. Madam Kaji. Madam Kaji. Oh Kaji. Oh yeah, from like uh, Evangelion. Kaji. Okay, there we go. <laughs> there kidding. you go. That's how you remember it. Um. <laughs> So she signs up with Madam Kaji and, and she like basically befriends them. And then later on, it actually does pay off where she has them as her courtesans when she uh, marries into the shogunate. But um, yeah, so she takes like huge risks, like going to, into the brothel to do to do something like that. But and like she shows her her talents where she she essentially uh, like satisfies this guy without even touching him <laughs> pretty much. Well, because he's like really rumored funny. to be like, well, oh, well, yeah, good luck getting him up. He hasn't gotten him, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because like you know, before she actually like sat down and talked, spoke with him and stuff, you know, it was rumored that he was this this ruthless person, and you know, he was horrible to women and stuff like that. But in reality, it really wasn't him. Like he actually has a stutter. Number one. Oh, you're um, talking about her her husband. Her husband, yeah. yeah. We were talking uh, about the ta- fat guy, but ta- yeah. Takayoshi. I thought you were talking about the brothel guy. <laughs> we were talking about. Oh. I was talking about the brothel fat guy. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. Yeah. I'm jumping ahead. Okay. Never but mind. no, that Continue. too. Like, I think that's why Danny, you like Akemi so much because she finds ways to do things still correctly, just in her own way, where she doesn't have to like do anything. She doesn't have to do anything she really doesn't want to. But right. she still yeah. gets it done, and it's kind of cool. But she, she has evolves. to play. She has to kind of play within the rules of the of the system. Sort yeah. of. She breaks the rules, but not like she can't go she too far. She swings yeah. the scale in her favor, and like yeah, yeah. Um, she's, you know, the one guy. Her her she her pushes friend, the boundaries. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mecky, he's like trying to teach her, like, dude, the world's not fair. You have to find a way to do stuff, right? And yeah, yeah. Her and her then, mentor, and then also, and then also, Lady Kaji's telling her like. Dude, no, like once men get their dick wet, they're nothing, right? 
Yeah, and so yeah, she yeah. Kind of, oh gosh, I loved that part yeah. because like you can tell that like obviously Akemi we doesn't know a, about like <laughs> you know sexuality and diaper. stuff like that. But but when when Madame Kaji literally said that to her and was all like, "Men are weak. Like the only reason why men go to war is like because of this." But like in reality, we have control over them, and 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 like. <laughs> Oh man, that whole yeah. scene when she was just explaining to her, like she's hyping her up, she, how she's pumping to her up. how to like seduce a man, like she she got it. Well, so. she did the free run thing where she just blows a kiss. I was gonna say like she takes <laughs> That'd be funny. she takes like the the people that she kind of feels like she gets along with. She takes what they say into consideration and goes, "I can do this my own way, and I can find a way to do it." And then yeah, by yeah, the yeah. by the end of the I don't want to spoil how she gets to that point, but like, you know, towards the end of the season, she's kind of just like, nah, this is what I want to do instead. Right. And it's just kind of really fucking cool. And she makes that choice because of given the circumstances, whereas mm-hmm. Mizu's progression. Mizu is, is just is one of is he, just it, fucking, uh, what do you call it? She's got some, rival the fittest fucking, she, uh, power is power or whatever. No, she's got, for she's got violent trauma and she has to get over it. Right. And the way she gets over it is really fucking cool. Might is but right. Might is right. That's what Mizu does. It just takes she her a little forces longer. her way through things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, Mizu would just go through the front door and you're like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it. Let's wow. Try it. <laughs> but it like, actually worked because they only had like four guys standing on the door. <laughs> yeah. There, w- w- there's a point where Mizu is forging a sword or reforging a sword. And that's kind of like when it happens for her, when her evolution happens. And it kind of happens all at once, rather over time, like with Akemi does. And maybe that's why Akemi stands out to you more. Um, but like it it's to get over to get over to, like every kind of struggle is a struggle, I guess. You have Mizu who's at the very bottom of like the caste system, and then you have Akemi who is like Towards the she's top. at the top, yeah. But they she's both literally at the top. They both have to get over being who they are in their own ways, and it's just like I don't know. I think it's pretty cool to see the juxtaposition in the story that way. I guess. Yeah, yeah, and and like to be fair, uh, men in this period didn't have it much better unless you were in like the higher tier. <laughs> oh yeah, you were, no, if you you're, were if, worth less than nothing. If you're a <laughs> yutz, yeah. If you're a yutz man, yeah. you're you're at Brannigan's army. I mean, they they would just kill you. Like women, they'd put you in a brothel. Wave. Men, they just fucking slit your throat. You're dead. Like yeah, you know. a, a highly so. respected courtesan could be like, well, that guy tried to tried to touch me in a way I didn't want, and then the fucking guy will they'll kill you. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, yeah. If you're a yacht, I mean, that's, that's kind of how it's been. I mean, it, it's like, uh, what do you call it? Like in in this period, like the women lacked freedom, but they they weren't ruth. They weren't like killed wantonly if that that's not a word but you know what i mean no i know what you mean and they they were used but not killed which i don't want to say is better but it's it's different so yeah um yeah so like the i i love the action scenes of the show like i know we're talking about a kemi but uh mizu's fights were fucking awesome like and they did they did a great job with the choreography too like when she's fighting the assassins in i think is episode three two or three she's on a cliff like the a cliff face and like standing on these little she's they're basically like fighting like goats (laughs) just standing on these little tiny platforms she's slicing people's arms and wrists off because her sword is made by the master swordsman or swordsmith and it has this special like meteorite uh metal to it which actually i i love i love the part where the uh, master ages is showing her how to make a sword and he's saying something to the effect of like two different a, a weak metal and a strong metal make an even stronger metal if that makes sense or a stronger material right so two different things can make a third thing that is even stronger than either of them and that's it's it, it's a pretty obvious metaphor for mizu's uh uh racial background right she thinks and everybody thinks that she's she's half as good or less than that that she's that she's a demon or nothing because she's part white. She's not full Japanese, but in reality, she has to accept that she's, she is stronger because of it, you know? And like the master, the swordsman or the 
AG actually literally says that to, to some effect. So that was, I found that was a cool uh, metaphor. The sword like is her pretty much. Uh, so that was cool. What did you, what'd you cool guys think of the of the fight scenes and everything? Which oh, go is ahead, cool son. because the sword had like a watery effect to it. And the word Mizu means water, which is super dope. Um, what I thought about the fight scenes, I thought they were cool. Man, yeah, I never I'll never get over just old school sword fight shit, man. I love that shit. And the way they did it here was pretty cool. I mean, they they the CG, man, you can you can make shit look super dope animating it, you know. And uh um, I thought I, I liked how some of the fights too were like really raw. Like you know, like one of them would drop a sword, right? And then there's okay. Oh, we'll she, and Mizu would use any weapon to fight. Yeah, she yeah. Just yeah. use her sword. No, she would kick and punch. She would do whatever. You know what I mean? Like she she grab stuff off the ground and fucking spear people with it. The fights got raw, right? Like they like there there'd be parts where like both people would drop the sword or their weapon, and they'd be like, "Okay, well, I'm gonna start punching motherfuckers." You know, I'm gonna hit this motherfucker with another motherfucker. And it was just, it, it was really cool. It wasn't just like all fancy ass sword play. It was like, nah, this is like, this is legit. It's, we, we, it's, it's going to be me and you, and it's not going to be me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm gonna it, had, it had a mix of uh, elegance and then just grit. And rawness. <laughs> Some yeah, of it's time. like, nah, this is how yeah. a real fight would look. Yeah, for real. And that's another yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, real fight, a, real fight, both swordsmen are dying. Yeah, no, real, a real fight, like, it in a real sword long. fight, both people are dying. And, and you know, like, you, <laughs> it's, you it's can, not one winner. <laughs> you can put on, like, an old school, like, kung fu movie, right? And the fight lasts, like, 10 minutes. In real life, a, a real fight lasts, you know, anywhere from 30 seconds ten, to five minutes. It's just, yeah, it it's less happen. than that. It's, it's like 10 seconds. Like, do, yeah. it, if you get into a knife fight, what, what's the saying? It's like the winner dies during the fight. No, no, sorry. The loser dies in the fight. The winner dies in the ambulance. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so never get into a sword slash knife fight. You will die or get very badly hurt. Yeah, no, just uh, walk away, run away. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, run. Yeah, don't don't get near it. Uh, but yeah, th- this is that's why we have cartoons in cinema. It's cool. You know? Yeah, just watch it. I liked when she when Mizu was also storming uh, the castle. The, the mini castle, Master, not Master AG, Abijah Fowler's um, fortress. And he has a bunch of traps and stuff. And, and uh, oh God, what's the other guy's name? Uh, Heiji Shindo is like looking in the spyglass, like trying to see what's happening. And like, and that was just, that was just cool. Like that was, that was a fun, like video game feeling episode. Um, and that showed all these different angles of how he was looking at it. Yeah. Like yeah. they're plotting at the top of the tower. Mizu is fucking bulldozing through, but also she's getting hurt like every time she goes through a new section. Pretty brutally, actually. And uh, she eventually finds uh, what's his name? Uh, her companion, other guy, other guy, Tygen. She finds Tygen, like who has been tortured because they captured him. And yeah, I mean, that, that was just a cool episode. I love that episode. Um, I think everybody generally, the consensus is that episode five was the strongest episode. And that was with uh, Mizu's flashback, which we already sort of talked about that, but it was flashback to her marriage to this uh, older samurai who raised horses and they fell in love. And then eventually he saw, he thought she was like a demon and he turned her either he or her fake mother turned her in to the, uh, I don't know, to the authorities. And like, they came and tried to kill her. And then she, she like, that like broke her, you know, that, that whole flashback did. So I think a lot, a lot of people would say that's the best episode. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it was okay. Like it was a, it was an impactful moment and everything, but I, it, I wouldn't say it's the best episode out of this series, quite frankly. Like it didn't, it didn't really, I don't know. It, it. I think more so. I think personally for me, I think the best episodes were like the last three, I would say, or like the last episode or something like that. I thought episodes five to eight were better than the first half. The second half were better. I think me. episode eight was flawed, though, because it ended. It wasn't super satisfying the way it ended. Like I, now we I need think, to see more. No, you know? and, and I was gonna sell it, tell you that I was gonna say that too, Nick. Is I'm glad that you said that. It, it, it hung. Okay, this is gonna sound weird, but let me tell me if you understand what I mean. It 
focus too much on what they wanted to be a cliffhanger for season two. And not mm-hmm. so much yeah, on like a yeah. climax for season one. Yeah. Yeah. So like the narrative was kind of weird. The the way that it the, the way it was boarded and kind of paced was weird. Yeah, the the way that the episode eight just played out, I think yeah. it was I think that was just like it there was a lot of cool stuff that happened, but I think it was probably the weakest episode. That doesn't mean it was bad. It was just not as good as the other seven, I think. Um just the way that like Elijah Fowler gets like captured, uh it's a little bit un anticlimactically, kind of. Sort of. I mean it's a climax, but uh and then Mizu just kind of sails off with him and like she she does she does the Irish goodbye where she just doesn't say goodbye to anybody and just fucking leaves. Well, that's the thing um, about her. Like she just doesn't She's very care. stoic. She's she's pretty <laughs> she stoic. She doesn't care. She doesn't care. Like she it's not like, okay, I'm gonna capture this guy. Oh, but wait, let me go tell Ringo and Tagan that like, hey, I gotta go, I gotta, I gotta bring uh Fowler back to to London so I can fucking axe off these other three guys. Okay, I'll see you later. Yeah, like, yeah. And I, I would say that's a weakness of the show is that the main cast, except for Ringo, uh they they lack a sense of humor a little bit. I, I actually I would say mostly Mizu, obviously. She lacks she's like very she's she's just like almost one note. She's not but not as bad as like the boring, you know, characters that they make sometimes nowadays in the live action stuff. But like, it's hard to explain it. Um, she like she has a quote where she says, "I have no interest in being happy, only satisfied," <laughs> which sounds badass, and it kind of is. But at the same time, like, what is she gonna do when she kills all those people? Like, she'll just be she'll just like sit there and do nothing. Like, does she have any other? She like she did fall in love so like that was i think that's why that was my favorite episode yeah yeah because she she had the ability to fall in love and and she you know she was kind of like a wild thing and you know she she did not adhere to the same uh characteristics as like a typical woman so yeah that's a problem for her so there's and i'll I'll just say this and then i i have to stop because my voice is gone um and as long as I'm still able to talk, Danny, you owe me $5. Um, what the hell? So, oh yeah. Sam, just give your final thoughts. <laughs> here's my final thought. Is the, I, I, you know, I, I probably wouldn't have gone out of my way to watch this if, if, if Nick hadn't told us to watch it or recommended for us to watch it. But the, the, the whole thing, the whole story is like, she's out for revenge. Okay. It doesn't make any secret of it. Okay. It's, it's a revenge story. We all know, everybody knows, anybody who consumes media like we do knows how revenge plays out. Once you achieve that revenge, then what is there left for you to do? So what do you do in these revenge stories? You give the character who's wanting the revenge something more to fight for. And the way that eventually there's got to be something that gives for Mizu where that can't be like the thing that she's driven by, you know, but it, it gave us not really, it didn't really give us anything like that. Maybe she really is just going to get her revenge and then be done. Right. It's kind of like Thanos, right? His, his goal initially was I'm going to eliminate half the, the universe and then I, I rest and then I, I, I rest and watch the sunrise. That's it. And maybe that's what Misa is going to do. And maybe that's it. And I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I don't, I honestly don't care. She's such a cool character. All I want for her is to get what she wants and be done. Like, I don't even care what she does after that. If she dies, she dies. If she lives with whoever, she does whatever, I I don't care. As long as I want her to achieve her revenge. That's what I want the most. So, it's it, it, yeah, it's a typical revenge story. But at the end of the day, it kind of doesn't really give you anything else but that. And it's just like... I'm okay with that. I don't know. I'm weirdly okay with it. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. And my belief system is, is very horrible. Don't ever listen to me. But for <laughs> me, for me, I hold a lot of grudges for me personally. If I could go back and take care of some of those bitches in ways I wanted to, 
I would feel so much better. And that's a horrible way of thinking. So don't think like that. But I thought I want Mizu to get her revenge. And I, I don't care what happens to her after that. You know what I mean? So it's a weird thing to think, but like, I don't know. That's what I think so far. Other than that, fight scenes were cool. Not my typical art style. Animation was inconsistent here and there, but yeah, it um, felt like the frame rate was a little odd sometimes. Yeah, and you um, could it you looked could, it looked good and bad at the same time, but mostly more good than bad. I you can see some of the pixel rendering in it too, which is I don't know if it was intent it didn't seem intentional, but like there's a part where Mizu's like painting um sayings on her body and you could kind of see the pixelation in the letters on her body. It looked really bad. Like bad rendering, game rendering when you're playing like No, that's, that's just that's- how she drew the letters, dude. Come on now. She's a pixel artist, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's a pixel artist. Yeah, dude. Hey, um, that's her. That's her future career. It's her future career. Just... <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I'm, and that's my, I'm out. I'm out like trout. You guys, go you got on. any? Do you have like a, a grade or a letter oh, or number or thing? Um, I, you know what, dude? Solid seven courtesans out of ten. Solid seven. Actually, yeah, seven. Yeah, seven. And seven whores. Seven whores out of ho- ten whores. <laughs> Yeah, solid, solid seven. All right, Danny, what do you got? Um, I definitely enjoyed it more than I expected to, but I'm with some, like, there, I don't know, like, the story itself about Mizu for me there were a lot of flaws with it um you know there were things there were things that could have happened that didn't happen um so now that like obviously season 2 it is green lit we're going to be getting a season 2 um so you know, like, I don't know. I don't know where the story is going to go. Like, we know that that Mizu is 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 going to go to London. Like, that's her next destination. But my question is, is. Is the story just going to follow her or are they going to go back to like Japan and see what like Akemi's doing and see what Ringo is doing and see what Tegan is doing and stuff like that. So like I don't I don't know where the story is going to go from here like after season 1. So um for me personally if if season 2 is just going to focus on Mizu, I'm probably not going to continue watching it quite frankly. Um, I just, yeah, no offense to Mizu. Like she's a great character and stuff. Like this is a good, like kind of, if you're a huge fan of kill bill, this is your next best thing to watch. Uh, because like kill bill is also a, re- a revenge story. Oh, kill so, bill is better for sure. Um, by a lot. <laughs> but like if you want like another fix to that type of yeah, revenge yeah, 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 story, yeah, yeah. like this is your next best thing. So but I I don't know. Like as I said, like I I would have much rather have a story about Akemi than Mizu, quite frankly. Um I want to know more about, you know, how women are treated in the Edo period with like such high status, like with, with, you know, new money and stuff like that. So, um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, it was okay. Like, like I said, I definitely enjoyed it than I expected to. Um, so I, I, I will continue like watching it and seeing what will happen in the future. So I, I I am with Sam. Like I do want Mizu to get her revenge. Um, excuse me. So, but I also want. <laughs> there were so many good opportunities for Mizu to tell Tegan that she's a woman, and she didn't take it. 
So yeah, they almost kissed at one point. I think. I well, think he yeah, like knew, there was a but... point in time where like they were kind of like roughhousing and stuff, and I'm like, like oh, please they do it. they kind of like locked eyes with each other, and they had like a moment and stuff, and they moved away and and stuff, and you know, uh, Misa was all like, "Take it, I have something to tell. Like, I have a secret to tell you," and like I was just like, "Oh, she's gonna tell him that she's a girl." Like I wanted that, but then she went with the whole, you know, Akemi got taken uh, and she's going to Edo to do this arranged marriage thing and stuff. I'm just like, girl, you missed your opportunity. Like, come on. So. um, A woman like that doesn't come along every dynasty. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just thinking of Mulan. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, like I, I feel like. I don't know. Uh, going off what Sam said on like, you know, with with Mizu, once she gets her revenge, like that's it. Like what's next after that? You know, like if she would have told Tegan that she was a woman and stuff and then maybe, you know, like they can bond, you know, be be more closer and stuff like that could be like a relationship that she can build once she gets her revenge. But I mean. That's just my tinfoil hat going up and everything like that. So um, as for score, I am going to give it a a six, six, um, uh, six. No nubbins touching boobies out of ten. <laughs> yeah, when Ringo was in the brothel. <laughs> yeah, they're all like, "Do you have you the the freaking prostitutes were all like, oh, have you touched these before?'" <laughs> and he's like, "No," and, and the prostitutes are like, "Yeah, you gotta take, you gotta like touch these like they're peaches. You like peaches, don't you?" And he's like, "Peach." Yeah, that's Danny's takeaway. Peaches. <laughs> that's literally that's what Danny's happens at remember. the end of the first episode. Like, yeah, yeah. Mizu's in the spring, and like she hears a noise, and she like gets her sword out, and Ringo's there, and she's naked, and he goes peaches, and that's it. This the the, the freaking episode ends. So it's just like, oh man, okay. Oh well, yeah, I, <laughs> I do want to say that to trigger warning, not only for the violence, but like um. Which again, there's not a lot of gore. I mean, you do see one guy's intestines fall out one time. See a little bit of bone and stuff. Yeah, but it's but not like yeah. I also just general warning because you see a lot of PBs. Oh gosh, you see a lot of dick in this. Flaccid yeah. though, they're flaccid. It's fine. Yeah, no, no boners. You don't see. Actually, I don't think they're allowed to show uh, erect penises in yeah. like on Netflix. I think that's like a that's a borderline porno. It, yeah, it's like, that's like yeah. an industry thing. You can't do that. Yeah, so they're all they're all hanging down, you know, because. You can't show someone like spraying it's like your a, asshole. It's like a probably, festival, so. and like you know, people after sex Nobody or whatever, they take out their clothes and dump into a cold, dump, dump into a cold lake. Um, and then you see a lot of oh, and Ringo obviously. gets the item too. Yeah, <laughs> Ringo fun. gets a little, yeah, a little contest. Yeah, but it's like CG people, so it's not that bad. Yeah, it's not know? terrible. I just, just there are some people out there who are, who are just sensitive to general stuff. That's all. So well, yeah. So there's violence yeah. and nudity in the show. Yeah, yeah PB, PB. No, no, the gym jam. The Vajim Jam is implied. No, don't they? Didn't they show? They show like they show like, like frontal, hair. but not. They show yeah, pubic yeah. hair, but that's yeah, there's about pubes. it. There's pubes. They don't have anybody like spreading or anything. Yeah, no. <laughs> you see Akemi's pubes when she's doing the do one time, but yeah. And you see her butt. Obviously, you see butts. That's why she's the best character. See a lot of butts and boobies. Yeah. What about you, Nick? Well, why don't you final thoughts and score? What do you uh, I'm just trying to compare this to some other stuff I've watched. And I, I, again, I don't have a lot of experience in like cinema and stuff. I've seen Mulan. I've seen Kill Bill. I haven't seen a lot of like old Westerns like Jimbo it is very and stuff Mulan like that. And Kill Seven Bill Samurai. Together, and, yeah. I need to watch the class, more of the classics. Yeah. But Kira Kurosawa I, like and this, all that. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. I need to watch Kurosawa. Which stuff, reserves like a this, lot of inspo in this from that. So, I mean, yeah, of course. Yeah. That like inspired everything pretty much. But the, the, so Blue Eye Samurai, like it, it was good and above average. And I think what happened is like this show got really hyped because it's it's you know it's a new thing, it's new and fresh, it's good. I don't think it's going to be an all timer though. I think, I think at the end of the day, the show is going to be like 
it, it'll be it'll have like a maybe a cult following. Not cult, well, I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna go. I think in a couple years' time, are we gonna be putting it in the same sentence as Arcane? I don't think so. Like I really don't. Right? Yeah, no. I yeah. think Arcane was w- way better, and I know Wild. some people are gonna disagree. Yeah. Like I watched a, a review on YouTube, and somebody said the opposite, and that's their opinion. Yeah. But like the the thing that made this sh- like this 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 show did have good. Uh, like sound design and music at times, but it wasn't at the level of like an actual classic, like arcane. I don't think it didn't consistently elevate or even like legend of Korra, right? Like you guys seen that, right? That yeah. had really good soundtrack, right? And, and this, this show kind of was halfway there, halfway to having that. Okay. And I, actually, I'm such a sucker for that. There was that, that was the one thing that I probably didn't like was the music. Half of it was like it was good sometimes, but half it wasn't it was enough. Like old school, you know, Asian, um, you know, uh, the special. The, what is it? That instrument, B one uh, taiko drumming. You know, yeah, yeah. And then the other half of it was like, here's a a Japanese cover of Metallica, that Metallica song or whatever. It's like okay, that's oh all right. yeah, the Metallica song. <laughs> like, the it's Metallica like, song and the Kill Bill song were like so out of place. There was no direction to like, yeah, what what the soundtrack was trying to do. I don't know. It felt like in in the Mario movie when they put Welcome to the Jungle in the Donkey Kong section. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, like yeah. it's such a low hanging fruit. Like it's a good song, but God damn, it's overplayed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I keep saying it, it's hard to make good music or pick good music or like pay for the music. You know, music is fucking bullshit. But like. It's so huge. I think music is like is is ra- rising up and up on my l- list of priorities for anything. For sure, media. no, that makes sense. Um, that and makes I sense. obviously I can't talk about why it's good. I could just say it was good because I'm not an expert on it. But right. yeah, so like there's that, and then also uh, I think the dialogue was it was it was really good. They had it did have some really good moments, uh, like with Master. Ag and uh, with me, Mizu saying that she wants to just be satisfied. She doesn't, she doesn't want to be happy. There's there's some moments like that. Um, I actually think that the dialogue was above average. I think it was it was better than the music, but it wasn't at the level of like Tarantino, which I know some people don't like his dialogue, but it's kind of consensus that he has interesting dialogue at least, right? Um, and shoot, what uh, like Rakugo Shinjo, right? I don't know if you guys watched that or not. Shogun Roku Rakugo Shinjo. That had great dialogue too, and and delivery and, and like this show was it was part way there but not quite. Uh, and then as far as like style, I'm doing a mal review. I'm just gonna go uh, like <laughs> section by section. <laughs> the style was was good, and the and the fight choreography was I would say great. I think the fight choreography was one of the best parts of it. Uh, but. It was it was just like it had a lot of very good elements, but it, it doesn't for me rise to like great or all time great. So I'm gonna give it a seven. I'm gonna give it a seven, uh let's see. Seven chopped off top nuts, top knots out of ten. And top nuts too. Why not? No, seven flaccid penises out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> seven yeah. chopped off limbs. Chopped off limbs and penis. All right, man. Yeah, I I thought it was cool. It's, I recommend it, you know, just putting it on and watching it in the background, you know, or when you get into it, you get into it. It kind of takes a bit getting in, but I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I, I don't. We didn't really mention, like, the race thing, right? Because it was, like, a white Japanese race thing. I think they did a decent job of it. I don't think they well, they weren't, like, too think, preachy about it, you know? I don't think they, because I, well, I don't think they needed to be. That was just the setting. No, it was, it was pretty yeah. simple. It's like she was an outsider. Yeah, and this was, was in the 1700s. So that it's was like, just you know, like like, you, okay, so like because that was that was just the setting because it was in that era when they when Japan wanted to close off their borders to Western influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, but as far you, as like how it's all portrayed and everything, and, yeah, and, and, oh, and sure, and yeah. It, it didn't it didn't turn into Mizu being a white savior or same with uh, no the bad no. guy. And, and, um, and again, it didn't need to be Abijah you know, Fowler. It didn't need to be regardless, but like again, it was more so just for setting purposes and Mizu's character, I guess. But like you know, it's kind of like the Last Samurai, right? If you've ever seen that movie, um, yeah. So he he wasn't a white savior either, really, right? He was like he, he died in the movie, right? Well, he kind of halfway was, but they pretty much. I mean, he he, he kind of was, I guess. I don't know. He, but, he basically was like a a, a warrior. He was a ashamed. martyr. He, he was like a warrior ashamed of what he did, and he kind of used. Bushido as a way to like 
get over it. And then he he realized how like Western influence had only done destruction. And so he was trying to like make up for it. Kind of. It was kind of a weird thing. But it but wasn't yeah. like a it wasn't like a Jesus thing where no, like, no, I don't like, think it, it kind of was. He he did he did martyr himself at the end. I don't know. I'm not an expert on this stuff. People just get real sensitive about like white characters doing anything good anymore. I mean, so I, I don't know. Listen, listen <laughs> like you have to. We're not allowed to be good anymore. So the last know. samurai, take it There's as me just with my red a, bill. just take it as a fun samurai action movie. Don't take it seriously. It's just it's Tom Cruise yeah, being I mean, a, a Hollywood guy. You know what I mean? Like just yeah. And he's a, he wants and, a samurai. You know what I mean? I, I don't think I don't think uh, Blue Eye Samurai fell into that. Into that. No, Blue Eye Samurai was just. I mean, she was out. Like, was outsider the whole time. Like they fucking hated her. She was an <laughs> so. outsider because of X Y Z reasons, and that just happened to be the reason. So like because of the setting. Yeah. So yeah. We it just had to mention for, it because people are gonna talk about it. So it was more for setting purposes than yeah than, um, racism is bad kind of thing. Yeah. Which like I mean, because because like this was an Americanized, and and I know it's a French studio. Like okay, Westernized depiction of Japan. Like there was a lot of things. I watched a YouTube video where a guy kind of went over all the various details that would not have happened in Japan, but they they put them on the screen for us. So, oh, um, gotcha. Okay, yeah, I yeah. Mean, like how like when the child was misbehaving and the and the guy was like, oh, look at him. He does what he wants. Like they wouldn't let him do that. No, yeah, <laughs> back no. then. But um, you know stuff it, like that. But it's it's yeah. It's just I mean if you, it's if fine. you care about those nuances, then just do what Nick does and watch your videos on it. You know, just learn history. You know what I mean? It's not that hard. Information's available. You can just learn for yourself as long as you don't stay in ignorance. That kind of thing. Okay, I really gotta I gotta stop. Go watch uh, Godzilla I'm minus one. Yeah, just there go watch go. Godzilla. That's my advice. One. Godzilla minus one. And just watch Godzilla. It's really good. <laughs> I give I give Blue Eye Samurai seven Godzilla minus ones out of ten. <laughs> oh my god! King Ghidorah and all that shit. <laughs> Sam, I'm kind of surprised okay. that we didn't give it like tens or anything because people were hyping it like it's a ten. It's I don't think it's a ten. What did you guys give Arcane again? I forgot. I gave Arcane a ten. I forgot. What I think I gave it? Arcane a nine or something like that. Or... Yeah, I don't know what Danny gave. It. Danny gave it. I like don't a think four. I was on that episode. Okay. She was not. Have you seen it at least, Danny? Yeah. Okay. It's good. Violet, when Violet fights the one bitch at the end of the bar. Oh my God. Ooh. My favorite fight scene. So good. Anyway. All right, <laughs> fellas. Uh, that's, that's my cue. <laughs> Take her out. I don't have an outro. Uh, uh, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I, and that's the way the cookie crumbles, that's San Diego. The cookie crumbles. I love you guys, and I love you just the way you are. I've been Sam. <laughs> that's been Nick, and that's been Danny. Go watch Blue Samurai. It's pretty fun. And this has been the Anime Summit Podcast. Oh, shit. <laughs>